You guys asked for a video on ethnic motifs and so in today's video that's what I am attempting. What we finally create will look like this. I'm just gonna sit really still because it was so hard to edit this behind me. Okay, let's get started. So I'm starting on an A4 size artboard on Adobe Illustrator and this is my color palette for today along with their hex codes. I'm gonna first put these color swatches into my swatch panel on the right here so that I can easily access them later to change the colors of the design that we end up creating. For this, I'm gonna come down here to new color group. And when it opens up this box, I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see that all four of my colors are now here in the swatch panel. So let's close the panel and delete these swatches. Now, I'm going to begin today's sketch with lesson number one, how to create a mirror repeat. First, hit P on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool. Make sure that it has a stroke and I'm just going to draw a straight line like this. Click to create a point, then hold down shift and click again to create a perfectly straight line. Then come up here to object, repeat and choose mirror. You are now in the mirror repeat mode. Now let's delete the black line that we drew because that was drawn just to start off this mode. So what happens now is that anything that we draw on the left side of the line will automatically reflect onto the right. This bar up here will show you when you enter mirror repeat mode and once you are done drawing, double click anywhere outside of your artwork to get out of the mirror repeat mode. The entire artwork will now act as one as you can see. If you want to get back into mirror repeat mode, double click again on your artwork and you are back inside. So let's delete what we drew and get to the actual drawing. Lesson number two is how to create this flower. With the pen tool in a black stroke, let's start with drawing just the right side of a single petal. Once done, let's go to object, path and offset path. This will create one more line next to your original and you can choose how far or how near you want the new line to be. The nearness or the farness is called the offset and my offset is actually perfect right now at 1.2 millimeters itself. So I'm gonna hit OK. Now click on the inner shape and then click here to make it switch to a black fill instead of a black stroke. Then with my pen tool in a white fill this time, I'm going to add in strokes like this so that later it will end up looking like my flower has some shading going on. Once that is done, highlight the white area and the black area behind, then open the pathfinder and click on minus front. This will minus the white areas from the black and basically leave just the black part behind. Now highlight everything, right click, go to transform and reflect. Make sure vertical is selected and hit copy. Now drag the copy to the left side. Now, as you can see, the offset outline of a petal needs to be corrected. So let's use the shape builder tool for that. Highlight both halves of the outline only and select the shape builder tool from here. Now the shape builder tool will have this plus symbol next to it. But when you hold down option, you will see this minus symbol appear and while it has this, you can touch any line with the tool and that line will disappear. Now release option and the shape builder tool goes back to having the plus symbol and that means it's in shape building mode. So I'm going to click and drag across these three shapes and a new shape has been built and the offset lines that were previously separating them have also disappeared in the process. Our single petal is now ready. Let's zoom out to complete the flower. Highlight everything and group it together by hitting Command G on your keyboard. Then come up here to Object, Repeat and choose Radial. And our petal will transform to look like this, but by default, Illustrator has given us too many petals. See the symbol here? If you click on it, it shows eight instances. In this case, it means that we have eight petals but actually we need only five petals. So I'm gonna click it and drag it downwards to reduce the number of petals. Alternatively, you can drag it upwards to increase the number of petals. 
I'm also going to click this symbol here and drag it inward to bring the petals closer to the center and this looks fine. Now let's add a black circle at the center with the ellipse tool and finish off working on the flower by expanding the entire thing. Now I'm going to move my flower to the side here so I can always have a copy in case I need to use it later. And to begin my artwork, I'm going to make a copy of the flower by holding down Alt and dragging the copy to the very center of my mirror here. Zoom in to make sure that it is placed perfectly and I'm just using my right arrow key to move it to the right until it is at the very center. So this is the start of my entire artwork guys. Next with my pen tool, I'm going to do a bit of freestyle artwork. Basically think of all the Mehendi designs that you have done guys and bring in those elements here. So this is me drawing a paisley shape and I'm not too satisfied with the shape so I'm gonna hit A to bring up the direct selection tool and then modify the individual anchor points on my paisley. And now it looks okay. So let's move to lesson number three, which is how to create an art brush that functions like this. So with the ellipse tool, I'm going to draw a long shape like this. Then use the direct selection tool to highlight the two anchor points at the center and move them towards the right. Next, click on each handle and let's reduce the curve till you get a shape like this. Now, remember the white strokes that we drew on the flower petal to make it look like it had some shading happening? I'm drawing the same white strokes here as well to make this shape as well look like it has shading. Once that is done, highlight both, open the pathfinder, click minus front and we are left just with the black shape exactly like we did before. Now here's how we create an art brush from this. Make sure your shape is highlighted, then come up here to the brush definition panel and click on new brush and choose art brush. The only setting you need to change here is under colorization. Change it to tints because otherwise your brush will always be in black and you won't be able to change it to any other color later. Then hit OK. Now zoom out and let's try the art brush out. Hit B on your keyboard to bring up the paint brush tool. Then before we try it out, double click the paintbrush tool and make sure that your fidelity is at the maximum. The higher the fidelity, the smoother any lines that you draw will be. Now try out your brush and your results should look like this. Awesome! Let's delete everything and go freestyle on our main artwork. And this looks okay. Now I'm going to use the flowers that I drew to add some detail to my paisleys. I'm also going to copy a larger flower here and remove two petals and place it like so. Now at the very top, let's get back to some freestyling with the pen tool. Okay, cool. Lesson number four is how to create a pattern brush that looks like this. So let's go to the original flower that we created. Create a copy here, then draw a rectangle like so. Now I'm going to highlight everything and select my shape builder tool. So once again, if you hold down option, you will see this minus symbol appear next to the shape builder tool. And that means that any line or shape that you touch will be deleted. So I'm just going to click and drag across all the lower shapes like this. And just like that, they have been deleted. So this is what I'm going to use to create my pattern brush. Let's start by reducing the size of the flower so that we don't end up with a very huge sized brush. Then once again, up here at the brush definition panel, click on new brush and this time choose pattern brush. These settings are fine, but additionally, let's choose auto centered here, approximate path here, and again under colorization, remember to choose tints. Then hit OK and let's try out the brush. Draw a straight line like so, then choose the brush that we created 
and this looks super cute. Let's delete it and go add it to the main artwork. So I'm going to copy and paste this line, move the copy a bit to the left, then change it to my newly created brush. Then let's get closer and use the direct selection tool to adjust its placement. And this is what everything looks like so far. So let's go in and do some more freestyle on it. I'm using my flower again, this time removing one petal and placing it like so. And back to more freestyle. All right, now lesson number five is how to create an art brush that functions like this. For this, I'm going to modify one of the brushes that we already created, just so that there is more similarity between all the elements in my artwork. So open the brush definition panel, then drag and drop this brush onto the screen. Let's zoom in. Now every time that we edit a fully made existing brush, you guys should know that it will come with a box around it which needs to be deleted. This box basically was what defined the area of the previous brush. In this case, you can see this red box here. Highlight it with your direct selection tool and hit delete to remove it. Then go ahead and modify the brush. I'm using my pen tool and drawing in shapes like this. Then I'm opening the pathfinder and clicking unite so that all the shapes become one shape. Then I'm going to use the same steps that we followed in lesson 3 to create an art brush. And when you try out the brush, it will look like this. How cool is that? Let's go add it to the artwork. And some more freestyle. Awesome. So another thing that I like to do is add dots. Very simple. I'm going to open my brush definition panel and choose this dot. Now, can you see the brush size increasing and decreasing? That is because I'm using these shortcuts right now on my keyboard. The open bracket key is used to reduce the brush size and the close bracket key is used to increase it. That makes things super easy while drawing. So using those, let's create a row of dots, making them vary in size. Start here, then increase the size with the close bracket key, then reduce the size with the open bracket key, and you are done. Do the same down here. And this is lesson number six. We're going to create a pattern brush that looks like this. A very common design element that you see in ethnic wear. Start with drawing a rectangle like this. Let's increase the stroke to two. Now with your direct selection tool, click this corner, hold down shift and also click this corner. Then see these tiny dots that have appeared? Click and drag them inwards like so and that will make the corners round out. Then simply highlight the line at the bottom and click delete. Now go ahead and create the pattern brush in the same way that we did in lesson 4. Let's try it out. And that is perfect. I'm going to go click on my Paisley and make a copy of it. Then change the copy to my new brush. Reduce the stroke to about 0 0.7 and let's zoom in and make edits to its placement with the direct selection tool. Now if you have something like this happening, it means that these lines are coming too close together in this area for Illustrator to properly create your brush. So what I would do is break the continuity of the line by clicking this anchor point and hitting delete. Now both lines have been separated. So with the pen tool, we can just continue this line till the tip of the paisley, then go on and edit the remainder of the paisley as usual. Okay guys, this is what I have so far and I think I won't be drawing any more flowers so I'm gonna delete my original copy. Let's do a bit more freestyle. 
And then let's move to lesson number seven, how to create an art brush that functions like this. So now you guys are experts at art brushes, so I will run through this a bit faster. Start by drawing a shape like this with the pen tool in black and use a white fill to add the shading. Then the Pathfinder tool to minus the white area from the black and we have a single leaf done. Now draw the stalk of the leaf, increase the stroke and create more copies of the leaf and place them like so. Now to make this look a bit better, I'm also going to click on the width tool here and with it, if I click and drag here, I can reduce the width of my stalk like this. And then here, I can increase it. I'm going to do the same at the other end as well. Just click and drag to however thick or thin you want. Now group the entire shape together, expand it like always and let's reduce the size so that our brush doesn't end up becoming too big. Now place it sideways and make an art brush out of it exactly like we did in lesson 3. Let's test it out. And yup, this is exactly what I wanted, so let's go freestyle with it. Increase the artboard size if you need to by clicking on the artboard icon here and then clicking and dragging on the double-ended arrows that appear at the sides of your artboard. And we are almost done with the black and white artwork, guys. As a final step, just zoom out and look at everything and see what changes need to be made. Personally, I'm adjusting the stroke for a few of the brushes here and there, just to give the entire drawing a bit more depth and asymmetry. And done. Now let's go add some color. So I'm starting by coming out of mirror repeat mode and drawing in my background in the blue shade from my palette and sending it to the back. Now let's double click the artwork to get back into the mirror repeat mode. And I'm going to start by highlighting just the flowers and making them white. I'm also highlighting a few more areas that could be white. And let's now move on to the light purple in our palette. And finally, for the remaining black elements, here is a quick trick. Instead of individually selecting them all, I can select one item, then come up here to select Same and Stroke Color. This will select everything on my board which has a black stroke. Now change it all to the navy blue on my palette. I'm doing the same thing again for everything that is in a black fill color this time. And we are done with the colors guys. One last thing I want to do is make these flowers pop a bit more. So I'm also drawing a shape like this and sending it to the back. And this is what our entire final motif looks like. Since we are done, I'm going to double click anywhere on the background outside of the artwork to release us from the mirror repeat mode. Now let's go to lesson number 8. How to turn this motif into a seamless repeat pattern. With my artwork highlighted, I'm going to come up here to Object, Pattern and Make. And this is Illustrator giving you a preview of what your seamless pattern can look like. Illustrator has also gone ahead and added a copy of the repeat currently on the screen here in the swatch panel. The current repeat mode is set to Grid. And in the drop down menu, you have more options. I'm just going to go with something simple maybe brick by column and you can see that the repeat pattern has changed. These changes will also be applied to my swatch in the swatch panel. So I can come up here now and hit done. Now let's test what our final pattern looks like. Let's totally zoom out and choose the rectangle tool and draw the background of our print first in the blue shade from the palette. Then make a copy over it with the shortcuts command C and command F and select your repeat from the swatch panel. And that's it guys, this is what the seamless repeat pattern looks like. If I zoom in a bit, it will look like this. And that's it for today guys, thank you for watching and I will see you soon.